Okay, I just wanted to go through real quick the setup of tilt shift compositing with Blender. In this case, we have an image which I found on the internet, um, on YouTube, I believe. Downloaded it and I put it on a plane. So you can see that it's just a texture on a plane. And I should note that I'm in Blender Render because it'll render faster than um, then cycles will. I always hit match movie length and auto refresh also uh, and that'll get my movie so that it'll scrub right so you can see when I move the image moves with it. So basically all you're looking at here is a camera pointing at a plane that has the picture on it. I also should note, it, note that it is an emission material okay so it's emitting one so when I hit zero to do the view uh, the camera view my picture is the same aspect ratio as the camera so it fills the entire camera view so then the next thing is compositing and I go to my node editor we go down to here to I believe this is layers composite layers and I'm just gonna go through these nodes and what they do this right here is just an image inputs so you can find it uh, by adding input or rather uh, input image and then you just map to where it is open in the file I'm gonna delete that one I made that one in GIMP and I did it just like this. Here is the gradient tool in GIMP. I changed it to black. Changed this portion to bilinear. Click OK. And there you go. You have a nice little gradient band in the middle. And what that band is going to do is control what is blurry and what isn't. See this right here where black is it's going to be in focus so it's going to select what comes into this input of this node where it's white it's going to select this bottom part where it's blurry so you want the center band to be clear and everything above and below it to be blurry now that isn't all that's there is to a composite to the compositing for a tilt shift um, it's also important to make sure that the contrast is turned up a little bit because a model has kind of fakey colors. Um, so they're going to be a little bit over the top and the edges are all real sharp and defined um, because something small you just can't get the same type of uh, detail that you can from something that's real. So anyway, you t I turn up my contrast to 5. You can turn it up to 15. Um, you want to adjust it based on what you think looks the best for your footage. Uh, in this case, you can also, I have it set up to where I have a viewer here, and you can put the backdrop on, and it'll show what your changes do instantly. So like if I change this 5, I'm going to change this saturation value up to 2, which will be too much, and that's unrealistic. You want it to be semi-realistic. Go back to 5, which is just a little bit higher than, or 15, 1.5, sorry. <laughs> and my contrast is up to 5 there. I can turn it up to 10 or 15, but that's just a bit much, and it made, my, made things darker. Not real good. So let's just go back to what this looked like before with 5. And... This is pretty much my setup of the way I want things. If I hit a render, you can see how fast that rendered. And that looks pretty good. If I go to where, go back to my 3D, I go to where the roller coaster is and hit render on that right there, then that looks pretty good. You can see it kind of looks like a model. And sometimes some images or rather some video 
do better than others like the one that I had at the beginning of this video um, but what I'm going to do is render a few of these um, frames and you can see what this one looks like going through this compositor you can mess with the nodes like I said to get the best appearance you would like um, for it just mainly playing with these two things but this node setup does pretty good for what it does that's about all I'm gonna say about it thank you for watching